Hi there, this is Russ Mitchell with Wing Saber Historical Fencing at Warlord Combat Academy. We're gonna talk about blocks now. What separates blocks in the Hungarian Hussar lineage, which we teach here, from more mainstream systems across Central and Western Europe is the use of proximal motion to make the block. And by that, what I mean is that we will hold our hands in a sagittal plane in front of the body, and we will turn as if we were standing in the saddle to block something, rather than stand and move the arm back and forth. This gives us some subtle advantages, which allows us to make very strong use of false edge work and very strong use of the curve of the saber itself in our defense. And I'll show you what I mean. First, we come into our guard stance, hand as if holding a scabbard or behind your back. I have a microphone back there, so I'll put it here or else I'll forget like a lazy button, stick it in my pocket. If you're accustomed to a profiled guard stance in your regular training, simply come to guard of fourth and pivot on the foot and you'll be dead center line. From here, I'm going to practice as an initial exercise, turning left and right as if my saber were a tank gun and I'm just turning the tank turret left and right. Nobody moves a tank gun by doing this and then rotating. That's not how tanks work. We're using this metaphor in order to learn how when a blow is incoming and we'll come in this way and gather on the blade and stop at the guard, I don't have to be doing anything with my arm. All the force of that blow will be absorbed by my back and by my waist and by my feet. So the little bones in the wrists don't get strained. So we'll see how that works as we move forward. So Kevin's gonna help me by feeding in some cuts so you guys can see how this drill works. It's going to look a little bit strange as he makes cuts one through four when I block three and four because his blows are gonna gather into the top of my guard rather than the blade side. That's okay, this is just a drill, not the formal parry. Could you cut one through four, please? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you notice there was a little bit of a bounce on that first three, and that's okay, because this is a drill that you'll do with a cooperative partner who's not trying to tent peg you. What's important is that you adjust your hand to the height of the incoming blow. Could you cut one at me, please? One. This won't work. I need to be up here with my arm extended rather than trying to fight while a tyrannosaur. Short arms, very bad. Could you cut one again? One. I also don't want to take my arm off the line of my body. I want to keep it centered. If I take it over here, there's a possibility that his cut can slide off the end of my guard and hit me. If I keep my hand center line, no matter how hard he swings, he has nowhere to go except into my strong and into my guard. Cut one, please. One. Good, and you, can you cut one and give me a little bit of heat, please? Okay, one. Completely and perfectly safe, dead in the sagittal plane, he's got nowhere to go. So this tank turret drill is a very, very good way of remembering to use proximal motion rather than waggling the arm all over the place to get yourself into a strong defensive position. So when doing the real blocks, I need to pay very careful attention to maintaining that movement from the center of the body, that proximal movement that allows my hand to do as little as possible so that the weapon's curve itself can defend me. I'm gonna leave my tip behind and my palm will either rotate a little bit up or a little bit down depending on which side I'm rotating towards. This is a fundamental feature of human anatomy and why all fencing blocks wind up looking the way that they do. Could you please make cuts one through four? Okay. One, two, three, four. Good. Now, observe what happens if he makes cut one rather high. One. From here, I have raised my hand and he's gathered into my blade and I can make a number of responses from here because I've kept my hand in center line. If I drift out this way, he can easily come around to make some other attack, whereas now he's stuck. I can also immediately threaten a false edge cut or the equivalent under his wrist. Could you come in about standard? Okay. One. From here, I can threaten either those same cuts or threaten a cut to his face or a thrust to his mask. 
The bind here protects me no matter how strong his cut is. Could you cut one more time a little bit on the low side? One. Same thing here. He's coming a little bit low, but he's gathered right into my guard and my blade because there's nowhere else to go. From here, because I've got this guard position, I can immediately flip into the false edge cut to the wrist. If I wanted to thrust him, I could take the blow here, leaving my palm behind, and threaten a thrust to the mask as well. So what you want to do is practice making that tank turret block in your drills so that eventually you know no matter how much heat they're slinging, you're safe behind your fundamental geometry and where you bind and what the angles are give you immediate responses for the repost you want to make. Against a thrust, it's even simpler. All I need to do is maintain my geometry staying in that center line, in that sagittal plane. And in order to thrust, he has to pick a side unless he wants to try to stab underneath my weapon between my legs, which is probably unlikely. So, could you please give me a thrust? Thrust. I turn simply to put my edge in the direction he's thrusting. And if he thrusts on the other side, if he picks the outside here, thrust. I turn that way. It's the simplest thing on earth. So by using my center line geometry that we practice in the tank turret drill, I force my opponent to pick a side, whether it's a cut or a thrust, and then I simply turn to meet the incoming cut. Later on, you'll see how the specific bind you get will set up your reposts for you, even if it's a thrust rather than a cut. So one technique that is a go-to technique for all Hungarian saber fencing is the use of the false edge when cutting. If you've practiced your blocks correctly and are getting a strong bind, with the weak of their weapon on the strong or the guard of yours, using these false edge techniques is very, very simple. Could you please feed me cut one? Cut one. From here, all I have to do is drop my tip down and rotate underneath, at which point I have quite a strong grip under his wrist, as Kevin's tippy toes will vouch. I can also go over the blade. Please cut two. Cut two. From here, I can drop the weapon down, and you can see there's an angle there, I can easily obtain a cut. If the blades lock up and the guard is being clever, that's not a problem. All I have to do is take my body weight backwards. I will get a piece of him, like that one, and that one. That was an accident, I'll buy him a beer for that later. Could you please cut throw cut three? Okay, cut three. I block, if my bind is good, hitting him here is as easy as returning to guard. Easy peasy. Cut four, please. Four. Same thing. If I return to guard, he gets cut. If for some reason it gets hung up on his guard, he might have a really big shell here. No problem. I can hit the shell and immediately thrust. This works for me. He's still locked up. False edge techniques can also be done on the attack. I'm going to throw a cut one. Please block. If I know he's going to block this, it's the easiest thing on earth for me to simply come here. This is especially effective against opponents who like to punch into their blocks. Could you do that, please? One. The very fact of him pushing on my blade on impact helps me to get the disengaging motion to come underneath the wrist. This is fish in a barrel, very easy to pull off. It's a very good way to wipe out the newbies if you're in a tournament and get yourself towards finals. So, in conclusion, if you keep your alignment, false edge cuts are very, very simple. Throw cut one again. Cut one. So in conclusion, make sure you work the tank turret blocking drill, whether you think you need to or not. You will need practice maintaining this center line and turning that center line to face blows that are coming in, whether they're cuts or whether they're thrusts. And by practicing doing that, you'll maintain a strong position that can get rid of any attack, no matter how strong it is, allowing you to immediately repost and win points. We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.